SpaceX Starlink's direct to sell secret ship just revealed. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, all kinds of good stuff, maybe some AI. <laughs> Today we're gonna be talking about DTC or direct to sell. Some people call it direct to device, DTD, but I call it DTC. So direct to sell basically refers to having the ability to take your smartphone and connect to a satellite, all right? SpaceX satellite at that, which is unbelievable. And a lot of people will say, how is it even possible? How can you connect a phone to a satellite sitting at 340 kilometers in space, traveling at over 17,000 miles per hour? It works. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to get better. And let me preface this video with something that this is from me to you. If you are interested in buying a smartphone and you need to get one in the next couple of months, don't wait. Trust me. Go back to this video and you'll be like, yeah, I remember that guy said that. I probably should have waited. Wait. And by the end of this video, you'll know why you should wait. Probably by, let's say, first quarter of 2026. Probably be a good time, right around there. Maybe second quarter. That's when you should buy a new phone, all right? Trust me on this. And once again, when you're done listening to this video, you'll understand why. So we're going to get into it. I read a couple of articles. I threw them all together so you have an idea of what's going on. And then, of course, I'll give you my commentary. I'll break it down into the why stuff matter because that is what this channel has always been about is the why. Um, also, if you enjoy the content, please share it with your friends and family and community, maybe Facebook or Reddit or somewhere. That would be very helpful to help grow the channel. All right. Share the channel. Share the video. Very, very helpful. Also, if you enjoy it, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little notification button here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. So YouTube says, but they don't do it. Click it anyways. Then click all. That's helpful. <laughs> if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thanks button. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. You don't have to. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink goodness, I have over 560, 570 videos I put together just for you. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, go back to here. Click that and you'll see a ton of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it is what I just say. The channel is about the why, not just the how, the why. So let's get into this. I, this is fascinating to me, and I, I think you'll find it interesting also. SpaceX, chip makers, and the future of Starlink on your phone. The promise of direct to sell. Imagine pulling out your phone in the middle of nowhere, a desert, in the middle of the ocean, or deep in the mountains, and still having bars. That's the dream of DTC, or direct to sell service. Instead of relying on towers, your phone connects directly to SpaceX Starlink satellites overhead, treating them as floating cell towers in space. That is the case. Now, how does it do it? Before I go any further, it turns those SpaceX Starlink satellites into cell towers using an E-Node B. An E-Node B is basically a modem that they use on a cell tower near you, but they use it in space. And it can listen to an ant fart. <laughs> All right, maybe not an ant fart. But it could definitely listen to very, very weak signals that are coming out of your phone. And that's basically how it makes this all happen. Anyways. I digress. It continues. Today, this tech is live but limited, mostly for text messaging and SOS or emergency alerts. The bigger leap is still ahead. Why phones need a new chip. Here's where things get interesting. Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's president, recently admitted, quote, we're working with chip manufacturers to get the proper chips in phones. Very important, the proper chips in phones. Why would SpaceX need proper chips when DTC already works? That's a good question. The short answer is this, physics. Satellites aren't terrestrial towers. They whip around the Earth at over 17,000 miles per hour. And once again, they're sitting at about 330 kilometers in space. The signal behaves differently with Doppler shifts, timing delays, and power requirements that push current phone chips to their limit. 
That's why SpaceX is partnering with chip makers. The goal is to build phones with System on Chip or SOC hardware designed from the ground up to handle non-terrestrial networks or NTNs, the official 5G standard for satellite communication. So let's break that down a little bit so you understand SOC or System on Chip, that'd be the equivalent to your CPU, let's call it, on your phone. So they're going to redesign that. NTNs, which are, is that non-terrestrial networks, that's going to be like the new term. When you start hearing like LTE and 4G and 5G, and then you're going to hear, what? NTN. Keep that in mind, right? You're going to find that in the future many, many times, and you heard it here first. <laughs> Very important. What's this mean for you? So what does this unlock for everyday users? With new chips, your phone won't just manage basic texts and SOS or emergency messages. We're talking voice calls, internet browsing, even video streaming directly through satellites. That means no dead zones on cross-country road trips, no losing service during a hurricane, and that's good for me, and no expensive satellite phones when hiking off-grid. In other words, your phone becomes truly global. Is SpaceX becoming a carrier? I talked about this not too long ago. This raises a big question. Is SpaceX setting itself up to be the world's fourth wireless carrier? Gwen Shotwell has hinted otherwise, saying the plan is to quote, wholesale capacity to telcos. In plain English, SpaceX doesn't necessarily want to replace AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, or Vodafone. Instead, it wants to sell them satellite coverage so their customers never lose service. But let's be honest, let's be. <laughs> Once billions of phones have Starlink compatible chips, SpaceX could easily slide into a global carrier role if it chose to. Absolutely the fact, and I think it will. The big picture. For you and me, this is about never seeing no service again on your phone. For phone makers, it's about designing the next must-have feature. And for SpaceX, it's about turning SpaceX Starlink into more than an internet provider. It's about being the invisible safety net for global connectivity. That is so, so true. So there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot going on. We got DTC, we got DTD, we have NTNs and all kinds of other stuff, right? Now, I tried through the reading giving you all this information, but when we break this all down, like I said at the very beginning, don't buy a phone, okay? Don't buy a phone now. Buy a phone at the beginning of next year, maybe second quarter of next year. The reason why? The NTN chip, the non-terrestrial network chip. These are so, so mission critical, so important. And what they don't talk about this is the why. Why is SpaceX requiring these chip makers to make these chips? Well, it's about spectrum. It's about the $17 billion of spectrum they just purchased. What do I mean by that? Well, the spectrum that they just purchased is really not like 4G, 5G type of spectrum. It's not spectrum that the phones are already using, let's say. So they're going to use that spectrum, but specific for their need, all right? No one else is gonna be using it. It's just them at that point. Whereas the phones today do not use that spectrum, that frequency, that RF, that radio frequency, let's say. So they need to make a major modification in the hardware, and that's what they're doing. This is so big, just think about this. Think about SpaceX, some space company, telling you, Qualcomm or whoever, right, to start making a chip, a CPU, as we call it, right, or as I call it, it's an SOC, but anyways, the CPU for a phone, brand new, from scratch, new silicon, and you're gonna do it, because we told you to. Kind of amazing, right? And they will do it, 110%. They will do it. This writing is on the wall. DTC is here for good. Now, Apple has tried playing this role with their global star complete and utter nonsense. We know it. If you have an Apple phone, you know it. How many times have you been in an area where there was no coverage and it says, hey, you know, you need to link up to a satellite saying a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Wait a second, you're on. Hold it there. Wait, wait, wait. What are we waiting for? 
And then you can send like a single text and it gets there in like, I don't know, two, three minutes. So we're not there anymore. We've surpassed that, okay? Now we're talking about megabits of download and upload speed, okay? Now we're starting to see things come together. And this is going to be, as I said from the beginning or the title, the secret sauce, the secret chip, the hardware that is necessary for this advancement. And this advancement is going to be global. You will literally be able to take your phone anywhere on the planet and use it. You could be on the top of the mountain or in the middle of the ocean, it doesn't make a difference. You will still be able to use it. That is just crazy. Now, think about all the reasons behind this. Number one, you have like the whole timing thing and handover. Well, normally if you're moving from cell tower to cell tower, the handover from one to the next is like milliseconds, like two, three milliseconds, right? That's normal. Well, non-terrestrially, you're talking about satellites that are moving overhead at 17,500 miles per hour. And once again, at 330 kilometers in space. It's a little bit different, okay? So you end up with this, let's call it problem, because any satellite is only overhead for about four to seven minutes. That's it, and it's gone. So that handover has to be kind of re-engineered so that it works really, really well. That's one of the reasons why they're coming out with this new chip. The other thing is power management. As we know, the phones aren't designed to communicate with satellites. They don't have that type of power. So what they're gonna be doing is changing it up a little bit. They're gonna be using beam forming and other methodology to be able to communicate with these satellites. Remember these phones, the antennas are really designed to send signal this way, not that way, this way, right? Horizontally, not vertically. That's another thing that they're gonna to have to work on, so to speak. So there's a bunch of things going on here. Now the other thing is the spectrum, let's call it harmonization. You need to be able to take the spectrum that you currently now own, which is that AWS4 and that H block, that spectrum, and now work it in to the handsets. It's not there, you need to work it in. So once again, you need a new central processor. You need a new CPU or SOC, however you want to look at it. The carrier's dilemma here is, what do we do? Do we embrace it or do we not? Because if they don't, the ones that do are going to get an influx of new customers. Think about it. So they have to. They really don't even have a choice. Now think of a company like Apple. Holy crap. Imagine the implications here. Apple is always one that says, you know what, we're not gonna go down that road, we're gonna do our own thing, right? And it usually ends up being complete shites, every once in a while it's good, but for the most part, they always do their own thing. Thunderbolt compared to USB 3.0, blah, 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 you know, oh, this is what they do. The same thing with Global Star. They're using Global Star for their SOS or their DTC or direct to sell service, but Global Star is sitting at like 36,000 kilometers in space compared to 300. It's a big difference. That's why the communication is complete shites and why you're having to do this thing trying to find a damn satellite, and there's few of them. So, Apple is gonna have to make a decision, guys. They're gonna have to make a decision. Are they going to bake this thing in, this NTN? into their phones or not? Do they embrace it or do they resist? I can tell you this, if Apple resists and doesn't put this NTN chip that allows the satellite communication in the iPhone, Android will explode. Android would explode. That's my personal opinion. Um, what say you down below? I would love to know what you think. The other thing that is really interesting here that they don't talk about is IoT or Internet of Things, right? People don't talk about this a lot. That's like your mailbox that has Wi-Fi, right, that communicates that, hey, we just got a package, right? Or maybe a drone ship or maybe a trucker that's traveling cross-country, right? Imagine having the ability to track everything, cars, I don't care what it is, track everything with a tiny chip, that's communicating in space. That doesn't need to have cell towers anywhere. Doesn't need to have Wi-Fi, doesn't need to have nothing. Zip. Imagine that. You are basically tracking everything at that point. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's up to you to decide. I'm not a fan of it, but it's going to be. Nonetheless, that's the way it is. This is where we're going, like it or not.
NTN will be here. That's once again, the secret sauce. That is the secret chip that will be unveiled at the beginning of next year. So this is really big because what this is doing is it's making SpaceX Starlink into not just an internet provider, but a global backbone of wireless networks. Think about it. What Gwen was talking about here is they're gonna sell wholesale to these companies, right? You got your Vodafone and your AT&T, T-Mobile, which they're partnered with and all the rest of them, right? So what does that mean? That means that they're going to sell them that coverage. So when their system is out and they have no coverage at all, they're going to sell them the time, let's say, on the uplink to the satellite. That's what they're gonna do, all right? But like I said in a past video, does this allow SpaceX to turn into the fourth global wireless provider? And the answer to that is 110% yes. I don't care what Gwen says. Yes, they're gonna start out by selling wholesale to these carriers, that's fine. But the bottom line is, is when every single phone, Android or Apple, has one of these NTN secret sauce chips in it, it's kind of game over. Because at that point, they have full communication. That is it. They don't need anyone else's spectrum because they got their own. The spectrum that they do have is now capable, is now usable on every single phone. Talking about a disruption, I told you guys about this well over a year ago, right? I said, listen, SpaceX Starlink will be a carrier. They are going to slowly, slowly, but surely disrupt these big three, the big carriers, the ones that have been screwing us for so many years out of a ton of money. What we can hope for is not only the no service message being gone, but also lower prices. Because if there is a fourth carrier out there that can do this cheaper, the prices will be pushed down. Right now it's a triopoly, I guess you would call it, instead of a monopoly. It's the three of them and they decide the price and the prices are high. Right? I'm paying over $200 a month for my family. That's crazy just to have this damn phone. That is nuts. It shouldn't be. But the same way that SpaceX has kind of put out of business, DirecTV and Dish Network, as well as Viasat and HughesNet, one satellite internet provider and the other one TV, is the same thing that they're going to do with these providers. That's my personal opinion. What say you? Down below, what do you think about all this? What do you think about DTC in the future? What do you think about this secret sauce, this secret chip that's going to be unveiled, let's say the beginning of next year? What do you think about that? Also, what do you think about me telling you not to buy a phone until 2026? Does it make sense now? I hope so. Because if you buy a phone and you don't have that NTN chip in it, well, Everyone else will, and you won't. And you're gonna end up buying a phone after that because you're gonna want the exact same type of service, unobstructed service, no matter where you are on the planet. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this interesting. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your community. I would appreciate that. And head over to my website, jchristina.com forward slash shop. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash shop. See if there's some merch over there that you like. If there is, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully through SpaceX Starlink and DTC. We'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.